concepts into you as possible. Uh, this is my good friend, Dino Paston, ladies and gentlemen. Keyboard player for uh, Alabama, if you uh, are familiar with Alabama, uh, not the state, but the country group, and uh, Barbara Mandrell, and he has played for kings and presidents and white houses and all kinds of people. And uh, one of our great, great friends been here with us from the beginning. We're going to be talking a little bit about improvisation and some, some um, just concepts regarding soloing and, and uh, things like that. Right, Dino? Good to be here. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Very good. We're going to have fun with a song I think everybody knows. Want to get started? What, what, what song is that? Maybe. I hope I don't. <laughs> well, the song is up on the board. Okay. And can everybody see that? I was hoping for a, a darker... We can maybe get it on our hand cam. Uh, is hand cam up and running? We'll, we've got our top people working on that. Okay. Or if we get a Sharpie that's... that's uh, not a Sharpie, but a, one of those dry erase. I basically have here... Each, each letter that you see is a chord. Okay? Now you guys are used to seeing all kind of different charts, all kind of different ways to play songs. Each, each one of these letters is a four beats. Okay, it's a measure. All right? And so I'm just gonna, we're just gonna play these. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Is it a dry erase? Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure it's not. It's These guys are going to permanently be playing this song. I want to give you a shark. All right, so this song is When the Saints Go Marching In. Anybody know that song? Oh, yeah, when the Saints Marching In. When the Saints Go Marching In. Scale. 
different notes will be emphasized at different times as I'm coming through the various chords, but basically anything in the key of C is going to work. Ready? I want you to lay down the chords. Here you go. Two, one, two, three. <laughs> Little bit of movement, 
you can do all kind of stuff. that does any kind of improv does, they just grab something, they just make it, they, they mold it, it's like putty, you can do, you, you, you got the stuff in here to do it, everybody's got stuff inside of them to do this, you know, so, uh, what, you, what you don't want to do when soloing is to musically mumble, um, you don't want to do that, so like if, if I'm musically mumbling and not really thinking what I'm doing, let's play that last line again, I would do, like, let's play it, one, Two, I want two, three, four. I want. I'm just kind of wobbling around. I'm not really going anywhere. Not really creating a melody. Anything interesting to listen to, right? What the ear picks up is patterns. Okay, a little little key. You want to make a solo that actually means something. Create something that's a pattern. That's what the ear. Of if I don't create a pattern, it's just gibberish and you don't know what I'm saying. But as soon as I give a pattern, suddenly the ear goes, ooh, I know what that is, and it jumps right to it. Okay? So creating little melodies doesn't have to be complex, it just needs to be something that the ear will recognize as a pattern that goes together. Does that make sense? I can play a gazillion notes and you walk away and you go, Wow, he was fast. But you don't get anything out of it yet. You know, you can all probably hum the, the signature line to your favorite song, which is only probably five notes long. That's because... Which we all know is that George Michael song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <excuse me. laughs> all right, so once you crank your saxophone, you multi-instrumentalist, you... I could never decide when I was a kid. So, by the way, no, I don't, I don't even want to mention it because it's going to screw you up. I'll what, just tease you. What okay. day the Blues Brothers? <laughs> we are playing in the key of C. His, uh, his saxophone is actually in the key of B flat. So he is, he is, in his mind, he has to play a step up. So in his mind, he's thinking in the key of D when I'm playing in the key of C. I'll throw you off, but different instruments are in different keys. And so, in horn instruments like that, you, an instrument in the key of C, don't even imagine a, an instrument that would be in another key. Well, welcome to the world of saxophones where everything is in a different key and they're constantly transposing. So, he's gonna be playing the key of D, I'm in the key of C, and we're gonna do a little bit of this. One, two from the top, one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so basically, oh look, yeah, we can barely have it on here. But, but that's all I was doing. And I was doing the whole the whole solo like that. Now, of course, you know, it can get monotonous sounding like that, but that's one way to attack a C chord. Right? You could just you could just all you know and then you can connect it if you go up the scale, you know. So all you're doing is you're playing a C scale, but as you get to the to the one, to the three, and to the five. Which is how you can play different keys, by the way. If you think of each key as, as you know, let's do down here, one, three, and the five. That's all I'm doing and on saxophone. I'm thinking, what's the one, three, and five of D? That's what I was playing, so I was messing around with D. But basically, I'm thinking one, three, five, right? And then uh, pretty much I'll throw a seven in there, too. I'll, I'll throw some numbers at you here, and I know you guys are taking Steve's course, so you know what it is. I'm guessing. Right. <laughs> so if you want to, if you want to really, ex uh, uh, you know, your your, uh, your portal thing, if you want to, if you want to expand your sound a little bit, and you hear these players play all this stuff, and you go, man, what are they doing? What are they thinking? You gotta, you gotta think that, you know, there's there's these numbers here. I'm running out of board here. Okay. So here's a 13. Too. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. Barely. Alright, so when you think about a, a chord and you're playing now that's seven right there, what would a seven be in, in the key of C? E flat. B flat, okay, that's a good point because that's a that's a seven flat, flat seven. So you could use a major or a flat seven, okay? You could use a, a, a regular seven. <laughs> or a flat, depends on how you want it to sound. If you want to sound, you know, major is there's the seven. But if you wanted to you wanted to use the, the seven flat. So it all depends on how you want to take it. Uh your seven, right? So let's just say you did uh you say you did the seven because you know on this kind of a song it's going to sound jam, jazzy, and sevenish. There's the seven. So you've heard people go right? What is that note? You ready know? Ninth. Very good. So that ninth gives you that stretchy feel, doesn't it? Just how about this? Step up to the 11. So that's that's your, you know, here's your B flat right here. Your ninth was your D. And you might think, well, man, I play D way down here, man. I'm, I, I'm covered in ninth. Yeah, but it sounds different when you take it up higher. A D sounds different than when you play a D down there. This F sounds really different. That's the 11. And then when you get up to this 13 and this A, you start playing like, you know, I mean, this this is really what what. Jazz players here, I mean, you may be hearing this. A jazz player will hear this. That's what you're hearing in your head, okay? You, you get to the point where you can start hearing this stuff in your head. Okay? So there's different ways to look at all these things, but if you just realize that, that a, you know, a knife, Will stretch your sound, will stretch your, you know, even if you play in a regular C scale. You know, you just milk those notes. You can milk those notes and make those notes really stand out. It depends on how you play, okay? The first. Oh. The further you are up this, this triad, C is, of course, the, the fundamental. So when I play C, it's going to sound very stable, but very plain and uninteresting, okay? The third, the fifth, that's still very plain world. As soon as I start getting into sevenths and ninths, it starts to sound a little bit more jazzy. It's jazzy up there, okay, in those upper extensions of the, of the chord. Now, if I just played the chord tones over all of these, like over the C chord, I'm either playing a C, an E, or a G, well, that works, works fine. 
sounds very Dixielandish because they use a lot of arpeggios and just um, just the chord tones. So let me just play just using the triads, like over the C's I'm doing a C E G, over the G's I'm doing a G B D, and you'll hear how it sounds very very plain, very almost Dixielandish. Okay, one, two, a one, two, three. That's kind of boring. So if I want to add maybe a note beneath going to my target note, okay, it's a little trick you can use when you're doing a solo to actually extend more out. I'm not actually being creative, I'm just doing a little trick there. So if he's doing, we're doing that first thing again. One, two, a one, two, three, four. triad, I just went a half step below up to the target note. Do you see how that works? It doesn't work quite as well going a half step above to the target note, which I'll play now, which is not going to sound near as right. One, two, three, four, one. Yeah, you get fired immediately off the bandstand if you do that. And suddenly it's like, okay, who's the guitar player? Right, yeah. Next. Thank you. That's okay. No, I don't even need to know your name. We'll get in touch with you. We'll get in touch. So, a half step below, though, it kind of works for some reason. Now, so what can I do when I'm coming above? Well, if I'm coming above, I'll go to the next scale tone above. So not just a half step. Like, the next scale tone above a C would be a D, right? So not a C sharp. I wouldn't be a C sharp, a half step. That's going to get too cluttered. I would do a D. So when I'm coming from above, I go from the scale tone down to where I'm, down to my target note. You see what I'm doing? So over the C, I would do a D to a C. Over the E, I would do an F to the E, which is the next note of the scale, the C scale. The F, I would go down to the E. Then A, I would go down to a G. So let's see if that works. One, two, a one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so that kind of works. Okay, what if I kind of mixed them up? What if I started on the note below, then went to the note above, and then resolved to the to the actual chord tone? You see what I'm doing? Two, a one, two, three. Hey, that's new. 
A B flat, hey, look at that. A B flat is a half step above an A, which is a half step above an A flat, which is a half step above a G. That sounds fun. I bet that could be something. Let's start right there. Two, hold on, two, three. Sounds like, wow, that sounds like a, a thing that would really work. All I did was I just emphasized whatever's changing in the chord. Does that make sense? So if I did a, a similar one, that's a G. What's a G? Try it. G, B, D. Okay? And then I go to a C, E, G. Well, G, G, that's not changing. B goes to a C, and a D could go to an E. So those are the two notes that are changing. So if I want to sound like I'm making the chord change, I gotta do these little shifts that are happening, and that makes it excuse me that makes it sound like you're, you've made the change. You're just emphasizing whatever is changing in the chord. Okay. Even if you did. By the way, they do have permission to noodle, don't they? No, no noodling. No noodling. <laughs> Do all you want. You gotta, you gotta get this underneath you too while we're, while you're learning it too. If I, if I did a little bit more of a complex chord change, okay? How we doing time? Ten more minutes. Okay? If I did a little bit more of a complex chord change, so we're gonna leave, leave this for a minute. I'll still leave this up here, but let's say I'm doing a, 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 a solo that's a little bit more, um, uh, let's say, uh, C to a few beats of that to uh, something away from C, maybe like an A flat major seventh. Okay, this is not in the key of C. I went a completely different direction, and then I'm going to go to like maybe a G sus for a few beats, maybe a G seven for a few beats, and then I'm going to turn it around. Okay. So this, let's say this is my chord change. Okay, well there's lots of possibilities here. Over the C, I could do a C, E, G. Over the A flat major seventh, what notes are in A flat major seventh? My theory kings. A flat, C, E flat. Oh, didn't he, John didn't even hesitate. And he's, look, he's checking Facebook right there, you know. <laughs> he's not even watching this thing. He's watching yeah. the game. A, C, E flat, and then what's the seventh? What's the major seventh? G. G. Ooh, lots of things are staying the same. The C is the same. The G is the same. But the E would shift down to a, an E flat. Maybe the G could even go up to an A, the A flat. So you see, you kind of notice what's changing, what's staying the same. A G sus is a G. It's the holiest of all chords, by the way. The G sus. <laughs> G, C, and a D. G7, we've got a G, B, D, and an F. Okay? Um, so what's changing, not much is changing between these two because you're almost kind of uh, uh, relatives to each other. But then this note, this F, that could go wind back to this E. Okay? So I'm just doing what's changing. But the main change is right here in this A flat major 7. So if I just played some chord tones, you can hear how the chords change. Let's just play this uh, uh, chord progression.
something incredible. It just has to be something that's memorable. Now, what made you, what made that sound good? It was a pattern. I thought it was a piano player. Actually, what really made it sound good was I have a lot of delay. <laughs> it was the delay. Okay, that that's too. That too. And I had this little pattern. Okay. Just that little bit of a pattern, a three-note pattern, suddenly I had you all engaged when I could have played a, a solo that had ten times more notes in it and nobody would have been engaged at all. That's a little bit of wisdom there. Listen to your favorite solos off of your favorite albums. I'll guarantee you, the guy's not playing 10,000 notes a minute. It's a little, it's a little hooky pattern that gets in your ear, and you go away whistling it. That's the can I, can I add something right there? Every student that I teach, every student that I teach, no matter what age, I'll say, okay, play me something you would play in a solo, and and they will play something. And I'll say, okay, keep playing. I'll let you know when it's good, okay? <laughs> because they have, they have to get, you Come have back to get, next week. Seriously, you have to get rid of your junk, right? You have to get rid of the, okay, okay, I'm not going to do that ever again. Okay, let me, okay, I'm never going to do that again. Okay, oh. Okay, that was nice. And I tell them, okay, now sing it. Okay, so they need to be able to, here's the deal. If you can sing your song, you know, you don't have to sing it perfect, but if you can sing along with it and hear which way it's going, then that is something that will help you remember your solo. And, and also, you'll play something that's singable. You'll play something that, that, that really, because it would I mean, just what he said. He says, if you, you know, all the solos that you guys, that's your favorite guitar solo you've ever heard, or whatever solo, you could probably sing along with it, can't you? You could probably tell what's, what, what it is, even if you can't play it. And that says something. I mean, that was brilliant what you said. It really is, you have to be able to sing along, okay? So I, I throw that in there because he really is brilliant. But, uh, Paul, that's not near as impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I say that when she's around. Where is she? Okay, yeah, there she is. He's really smart, this guy. Hey, Lyndon, come up here. Come up here, buddy. We're going we're gonna to have a little on-the-job training. Good. So, so be able to sing the lick. You know, if somebody goes, bum, bum, bum. So we're going to get Lyndon to solo over this progression. Yes. Um, you can use your guitar, you can use my guitar, whatever you want. Well, you better use that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you can run through my stuff, though. Run through my stuff. Okay, so here. Here we go. So now Lyndon's going to solo over this. And the temptation in his mind is to go to his safe legs. He's going to go. He's the, Okay. So the temptation is going to be, ooh, I'm up in front of people, I can go to my safe licks. And so you end up playing the same licks all the time. And you wake up when you're 40 years old and you go, man, I'm tired of playing the same licks all the time. Okay, so you got to force yourself out of that. Force yourself. Just, I play games with myself. I am not going to start where I want to start. I'm going to start in the middle of the neck on the second string. And I have to find something that works. That's that's the kind of game that you play. Let's do Lyndon first, and then we'll answer a question too. Then we gotta go meet. Okay. So you're just doing this little progression here. You can do these. You can just find little notes, whatever you want. You can play one note, and you can whistle. I don't care. Here we go. Let me give you a little delay. And you have our permission to mess up a little bit too. Yes. Yes. This yes. is a safe zone. Safe, safe. Right. Here we go. One, two, three, two, three two, four. <laughs>
here's a, here's a big part of the solo, and wow, this is what's tricky in jazz. If uh, you want to not step on the landmines, okay? There's certain, as I'm, as I'm soloing, if we were all in the key of C, and this was a bunch of C's and G's and F's, I could pretty much play anything in C, I'm not going to step on a landmine. Okay? But when I get into more of a complex change, I've got to beware to not step on a note that is not active over that chord. So like if I'm just sailing through, I'm playing my favorite lick over that C, and then eventually I'm landing on that A because I know it works over my C pentatonic, and I'm on that A, and then suddenly Dino pulls the rug out underneath me when he hits that A flat major seventh, and here's your A. My A doesn't work anymore. Ah! And then I go, that's right, it goes to an A-flat major 7th there. Um, you hit a landmine. So part of the deal is not hitting, is knowing what notes not to hit. Because you'll be going for your favorite lick that I know is going to work here, and just when I hit, Dino throws that A-flat major 7th on me, and I'm, ah, I miss it. So you got to know what notes to stay away from. So, like, even as, as Lyndon was soloing there, he was playing great every now and then, but every now and then he'd catch one of those landmines because the work, because the, uh, the, uh, uh, our, our earth changed there underneath him there for a second. So you got to always be, a, be, be wary of the lick that you're going for doesn't include a landmine that's going to change when the, when the thing happens there. Is that why you can use a bend? You could bend up to it, yeah, or you could just say, hey, it's jazz, you know, I've, I've done that many a gig. You just play that note, and if you play it twice, then it means that you, you meant to play it. I've learned that trick, I've, play, I've played that trick many a time. You work for Miles Davis, man, it's been working for us. That's know. right, you just play it a couple times, yes, yes. I am playing an A over an A flat major 7. Yes. It's a flat nine. <laughs> I'm just so far above you right now, you can't even keep up. Major seven flat nine. Get with the, get with the oh. major seven flat nine. Not a chord you hear very much. <laughs> very underappreciated here in Western society. <laughs> okay, it is 11.32. It's time for us to go eat. Um, wow, thank you, Dino. Thank you, Dino.